Hello all, I am Megha and I am here to present my project Categorization of Environmental Sounds based on pitch spectral correlation and preliminary findings in clinical population. So we all know that environmental sounds are very important in our daily lives. Uh, it serves numerous ecological functions and provides a sense of auditory space that is what is happening around us. It also gives aesthetic satisfaction. So the current research has focused on uh, environmental sound perception in cochlear implants, hearing impairment and normal hearing. It's got a very good diagnostic purpose because it is having a less linguistic load. It can be used in children with no vocabulary or people with cognitive deficits, foreign speaking um, patients that come to our clinic and also to evaluate central auditory deficits. Uh, currently, the literature lacks frequency specific impairments which are linked to the deficits in environmental sound perception. We all know that the most reliable method to obtain frequency specific deficit is pure audiometry, but however, it lacks uh, naturalness of our everyday listening. So there was a study which was conducted in 96 by Myers et al, where they tried to replicate pure audiometry using environmental sounds. But they used filtered uh, environmental sounds and uh, it altered the frequency spectrum, thereby causing a distortion and unnatural experience through that. Thus, a frequency-based categorization of these environmental sounds can be helpful for us in identifying disorders uh, which are frequency-specific. For example, a rising audiogram or uh, people with sloping hearing loss. What are the sounds that they can miss and how does it impact us? And we also know that environmental sounds can be culture-specific and also geography-specific. For example, a lawnmower is not so familiar in an Indian scenario because we rarely use it. Whereas um, in the West, it may be mostly used. Similarly, people from the coastal regions are more familiar to the sounds of waves than who are not from that. So identification also becomes easy for them. The aim of the current study is to adapt an existing environmental sound for open set perception in India to categorize these sounds based on their frequency aspects by correlating pitch judgment and spectrum. And finally, to explore the preliminary findings in individuals with normal hearing, sensory neural hearing loss and auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. So it's been carried out in three phases. The first phase was adaptation of the test. The test that we chose was familiar environmental sound test by Shafiro, uh, which has large number of items in it, which is why it was chosen. The second uh, phase is analyzing these uh, sounds based on their pitch as well as the spectrum and categorizing these sounds into low and high frequency sounds. The third phase was administering it on the clinical population. Phase one uh, content validity was done through familiarity rating and representativeness of the sound. For familiarity rating, we, uh, we chose uh, adults from both rural and urban areas as well as from both the gender. And for representativeness, we chose audiologists with greater than five years of experience. The phase two involved categorization of the sounds uh, into low frequency and high frequency. There were two steps in that. The first one was where the pitch of these sounds were judged by experienced listeners as high pitch, low pitch or unable to categorize. And the second step was the same set of sounds were also analyzed for its spectrum and the maximum number of peaks uh, uh, the first five uh, maximas were obtained visually and then categorized into uh, two groups based on the frequency. Phase three was administering it on the clinical population on the three groups. So it was carried out in a sound treated room and the uh, signal was presented binaurally through headphones at the most comfortable level through a laptop. They were asked to verbally respond what they heard. Coming to the results of each of the objectives. So the objective one, uh, which was adaptation, the uh, findings are that the uh, original tests together had 185 sound exemplars and after familiarity rating uh, and the representativeness, uh, it came down to 116 sound exemplars with 37 sound sources. So there were multiple exemplars representing the same source, um, as less as one to as much as four exemplars per sound source. And finally, these 116 sound exemplars underwent both pitch judgment as well as spectral analysis. 
pitch judgment wherever there was greater than 80% agreement among the judges those sounds were chosen so it was found that 26 exemplars fit into low 29 were fit into high pitch and then there was the rest of it which did not have any agreement similarly spectral analysis it was found that 69 exemplars all the first uh, all the five maximas were below 1000 hertz that is the highest peaks and 31 exemplars had their uh, spectral peaks greater than um, 1000 hertz so it was divided into through two groups spectrally low and spectrally high frequency finally a combination was uh, chosen that is those sounds which were low pitched and also had spectrally low components were taken and similarly the high pitched exemplars with spectrally high components were chosen as another category uh, Final list of sounds had 14 sounds represented as low pitch, 10 sounds represented as high pitch and then there were 13 sounds which were could not be categorized into any. So, there were a total of 37 sounds and there was a strong positive correlation between the uh, spectrum as well as the pitch judgment of uh, these sounds. It was found that uh, the previous original study had used a homogeneous group whereas in this study, we overcome that uh, issue by using uh, people from both genders and both rural and urban areas. And pitch judgment uh, was obtained not just through fundamental frequency alone, like in speech sounds. Here, a combination of both objective and subjective measure was used. Uh, the objective three was the findings in the three uh, groups. So, it was found that normal hearing had the best scores and followed by those with sensory neural hearing loss. And the least scores were obtained in auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. So, this can be attributed to the poor or distorted auditory information that is received in these uh, clinical groups uh, because both of them have poor spectral resolution as well as temporal resolution which is important for any uh, perception. And within group analysis also showed that uh, the low frequency uh, was uh, poorer in both the groups but was statistically significantly different in the group with SNHL. So, that can be attributed to the poor temporal fine structure and poor phase locking uh, in SNHL group. And in ANSD, again, it was not statistically significant, but there was a poor scores for the low frequency that can be attributed to poor phase locking. So, in conclusion, the stone is used to assess and differentiate sensory neural hearing loss from ANSD. The complete set of sounds is tailor-made for the Indian context. And since none of the uh, sounds have been changed from the original version, this can also be used in the Western population.